guys, what's up? It's Patrick. Welcome to my channel where I do out student lifestyle videos. So if you're interested in any of that, hit down below and subscribe. I hope you're having an amazing day and let's get into it. So I'm going to film this video while the light is cooperating with me because today has been a while. It's gone from raining cats and dogs to, you know, as you can see, exceedingly sunny and such that it's actually blinding me if I sit too much in the sunlight. So here we are. I know I said I was going to be gone for just a week while I was on holiday and then immediately come back and start posting again, which I didn't do. I've been off for a month. Loads and loads of things happened, which is the reason I couldn't post or, or didn't post. I will talk about everything in my next plan in the video because that's the video where I just sit down and blab at you for a good like eight minutes while the sort of actual setting up section is going on. So yeah, uh, you guys are just gonna have to wait for the next video. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna go get water because it is a talking talking video today. Okay, so this video, oh, sorry. <laughs> this video is gonna be all about the Asian readathon, which I took part in. Basically, I'm gonna leave link down below, but there's a YouTuber, like she's a booktuber, or she used to be, now she does like movie reactions as well, called Wit Cindy, that's her channel name. And she is a Vietnamese American woman. And um, she created this challenge in the month of May. Oh, way better, okay. Uh, she created this challenge in the month of May where you read books. Or that were only written by Asian authors. The only real restrictions are each book that you read is to be by an Asian author of a different ethnicity. Like it can be Chinese, it can be Indian, it can be Bangladeshi, it can be again Vietnamese, can be Thai, can be whatever, right? You can read as many or as few books as you want combining the prompts or not. I read Asian authors regularly anyway, on a general basis. I'm gonna do this as, there's a mirror here because I'm gonna do my makeup as I talk about it. I don't know, for some reason, I, I, just, I just feel like if I was just to sit and talk at you about books, I feel like that's a little bit less entertaining than watching me do my makeup and talk about books. And I don't really know why, because I watch YouTubers that just talk at me all the time but anyway this is going to be another books and a beat situation so i'm gonna keep my makeup simple but before i get into any of the books or doing my makeup let me explain what i did which books i read etc whatever so i read asian authors on a regular basis anyway because over the last couple of years the books published by asian authors have increased by numbers or at least the one ones that i can find and in the genres that I like. So, you know, obviously if the book is, I don't really care where the author is from. If the book is there and I find the book and I think the synopsis um, or blurb at the back is great and it looks good and it's something I'd be interested in, I just read it, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, and so I keep adding these things to my TBR and actually all the books that I read this month, which, by the way, the reason it's in May is because in the US, May is AAPI month, so that's one thing. Huh. All the books that I read were from my, were books that were already on my TBR. My, I, I mean, this year I want to get through as much of my TBR as I can, especially before I hit year three where I'm not going to be reading much anyway, if that makes sense. So I just picked books that were already on my TBR to read. And another thing is there were five prompts. I did fulfill each and every prompt, but they weren't all in May, if that makes sense. So I read four books in May and the book in the middle, like there was a book that was like a book about time or something like that. I'm gonna read the prompts out. It's, I'm gonna open it up on my iPad and, and tell you guys everything, all the details. But that book essentially, if you guys refer to my last Books in a Beat video, I was talking about the series um, Before the Coffee Goes Cold series and the fourth book called Before We Say Goodbye. So I just kind of played a little bit with the timeline and used that book as my fourth book. 
third book one of the five books anyway and yeah so i'm i'm gonna link everything down below by the way i ordered uh hannah bang's new album and i got the signed version and oh my god this is so cute i'm actually gonna get this laminated and then stick it up on my music wall tangent tangent over back to this <laughs> Let me open everything up. I'm not gonna tell you anything about the look that I'm doing because I'm gonna keep it pretty simple because even after I finish filming this, I'm literally just at home and I'm just gonna take it off and edit this video and post. So, you know what? You're not just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> so, um, the first thing I did obviously was look at the prompts for this year and the prompts were any book by an Asian author uh, that's prompt number one. Number two, a book that feels timeless. Number three, an underrated book. Number four, a debut novel. And number five, represents what you want in your next life. Which is, I mean, it's a fun set of prompts, to be honest. So the only uh, sort of prompt that I used a book from the list that cindy had put up it's in one of the websites was for prompt number three so let me go through the books that i read i read all of them on my kindle and yes i did actually pay for every single one um i bought them and they're sitting in my kindle because i'm not i don't actually have a library around here that i'm i borrow books from and number two i don't want to buy the physical copies mainly because I just don't have space in my house to keep the physical copies and they're far more expensive than on the Kindle and I also I mainly read on my commute to and from work and so obviously in that sense it's a lot easier just to carry a nice thin Kindle with me <laughs> so the first book for just a random book by an Asian author the one I picked was How We Fall Apart. It was a book I wanted to read next. Anyway, it was on, it's been on my TBR since it came out, which was 2021 20, or something like that. And honestly, my TBR just keeps growing and I don't read um, any of the books on there. So, you know. Number two, a book that feels timeless is the one, not three or four, where I put, uh, before we say goodbye. Oh, sorry. Let me talk about the first book again. So, the first book, book by an Asian author, How We Fall Apart, is by Katie Zhao. I don't actually know where she's from because I couldn't actually find anything. I genuinely have just put question mark, question mark, question mark. I think she's Chinese, if I'm not completely wrong. And so I didn't actually read another Chinese author for the rest just because I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna read a different one. How we so how I felt about again it's been on my TV for a while it's by Katie Zhao and yeah I mean I, I did read it and I think she's Chinese number two was once again a book that feels timeless it was before we say goodbye I'll link my video down below and up in the information thingy if you guys want to check out that video and give it some love so that one is by Doshikazu Kawaguchi I'm really sorry. I'm totally butchering that name. Um, and he is Japanese and it was originally written in Japanese and been translated to English. I've loved that series ever since I read the first book, which was like four or five years ago now. And I have even got my dad to read it and even he really liked it. Anybody that I've recommended the book to has really, really liked it. And as I said in my review, each and every story makes me made me cry so you know eh. prompt number three is an underrated book so this one i didn't actually know what it it meant to be an underrated book because i'm just like so this book i went through cindy's list that she had put online and essentially in that list there was a book that coincided with my tbr which was you've reached sam by dustin thou T-H-A-O and he's Vietnamese I think yes he's Vietnamese number 
four was a debut novel, prompt number four. And for this one, I read I Want to Die, but I Want to Eat the Cookie. Honestly, this book, I saw it when it was first released in the UK in foils. I was just doing my, you know, regular check out the bookstores to see what new books are out and see if I like anything. So I saw it. I didn't see anything else about it. I didn't even read the back. Okay, like I didn't even know what it was about. But the the actual title was so intriguing that I was like, I have to read this book no matter what I freaking do. So I added it to my TBR and it came back for this challenge. It is the first and only memoir I have read in my entire life. And she has not come up with a sequel. It's called, I still want, I, I want to die, but I still want to eat the boogie if I'm not wrong. Um, the next prompt represents what you want in your next life. Uh, prompt number five. Originally, I was gonna read Scatter of Light by Melinda Lowe. Now, the thing is, I love Last Night at the Telegraph Club by the same author. It's an incredible book and it made me cry so hard. It's so cute, but she is chinese by her uh citizenship i guess or her you know origin she's she's from china um and so for me that became is that gonna contradict with the it has to be a different author for every prom um i am gonna read that book next by the way now that the challenge is over so as an alternative i picked the Do's and Donuts of Love by hang on, Adiba, Adiba Jagardar. She's Bangladeshi. Um, I have read her books before, uh, famously Honey and Issues, Guide to Fake Dating. She mainly writes, I think, sapphic romances, which is so adorable. And honestly, why next life? I want a sapphic romance in my current life, so you know. That's always fun. So those were the five books that I picked to read for this challenge. I don't like to bake. It's it's loose powder, but I'm just kind of sweep it on over. Okay, let's continue. Hang on, I'm just gonna fish out my eye brushes, which for some reason I have not done yet. Well, I don't know. Okay, I know the sun is playing fast and loose with me. I'm really sorry. Okay, the lighting's gonna change in this video. I'm sorry about that. So I actually wrote down notes for the first two that I read. That's How We Fall Apart and You Read Sam. The last two I can talk through quite well. So I'm just gonna open up my notes and talk about the first one. I do remember what I thought about the first one. Okay, turns out I was wrong. I didn't actually make notes on you've read Sam, but I do remember the book. So we're just gonna talk about How We Fall Apart first, obviously because that's the first book I read. So How We Fall Apart is, um, it's kind of a teen, it's trying to be like a thriller mystery situation. I don't know how well it succeeds, to be honest with you guys. So um, I'm just gonna go through my notes. So the first thing I wrote was, uh, makes a pretty little lies and gossip girl. The characters are basically Chinese prep school students, which obviously was taken from Gossip Girl, and except the fact that they're Asian, all of them. The characters themselves are pretty much the same as Pretty Little Liars, except the fact that she's done a little bit of a gender bend as well, which all of them are not girls, three of them are, two of them are not. In the friend group, two of them are gay as well. The two girls are uh, lesbian and they, date each other for a second, one of the girls, but once again, this is borrowing from Pretty Little Liars where Emily and Alison date. So, and you know, we think Alison, yeah. And we kind of see Alison as, as this, for most of first season at least, we kind of see Alison as A, we kind of see Alison as the person who knows everything about them, is the kind of the main character, is the one um, black near them, blah, blah, blah. So, that's basically the setup of the book. It's a prep school, like Gossip Girl, the characters are pretty little liars. Literally, if you watch these two shows, you basically know the book. Like there is nothing changed. 
it's actually quite annoying to be honest because the second it hits you that oh these are the two things which like if you if you look it up online is literally the first thing that comes up but i didn't actually look it up online so if you figure this out the rest of the book gets really like it becomes a drag to read because you suddenly just know everything that's going to happen you know what's going on you know all the characters and how there's going to be absolutely no fucking character growth and all of that the romances in the book with the five main characters are also pretty much like pretty little lives you know you have the main girl i.e aria who's with the she's with Ed, she's with a young ish teacher ezra in this one this girl is with a like she's 17 she's with a guy who used to go to their prep school but is like four years older and has just come back to teach a class from college while taking like a gap year um but he is at the same time still 22 and she is 17 so, you know, you have the teacher-student romance. You have the lesbian romance between the two girls. You have one guy who, one of the guys likes the main girl a lot, but he doesn't really do anything about it, if that makes sense. So that, that was, yeah, that was basically the gist of the story. Do I recommend it? Not really, to be honest with you. Because I didn't actually even like the writing stuff. It was all very, like, Somehow the, the, the writing style gave childish, if that makes sense. Like I know it was written about high school students, but it literally felt like the author themselves was a, like, was a high school student writing this, which could get quite annoying, which I know she isn't. So also that's a bit like confusing. Like why hasn't, why is that your voice really? And yeah, actually. It jumps also it jumps back and forth a lot in time and it gives literally no warning that oh this is it like i mean obviously the characters are but like you need a warning to say oh two years ago oh five years ago whatever but it just doesn't do that it just starts the flashback without any indication that it's going into a flashback which is really annoying because you're reading it and you're suddenly like what what just happened where are we right that's confusing and annoying and the characters come off quite unlikable because like as much as the as much as the tv shows the characters weren't like sympathetic but you did spend time getting to know them you did develop a relationship with these characters you know you did like them albeit in like a iffy way etc whereas in the book it just it didn't translate and to be honest with you, that's really weird for me because I'm more of a reader. I always have been. And if there's like a, if there's a book series that's been, if there's like a book to movie or book to TV show adaptation, I'll always read the books first. And I've, I will always, always, always enjoy the books more. That's just who I am. That is just the way I'm built and wired. So for that not to happen to me in this book was quite annoying because I thought maybe if she just wrote it and like the best part is these are characters i know these are characters i watched these are characters i liked when i was growing up and yet somehow she makes like them so unlikable which is so annoying actually and yeah overall i give this maybe like a two stars out of ten uh two sorry two stars out of five i just feel like i, I don't want to be too mean by the way I bought this new mascara, it's the, it's the Revi one, and I'm trying it, it's the second time I'm putting it on, so we're gonna see. So, I just, I don't know, this is just odd writing to me, and I just didn't really love it, to be honest with you guys. Okay, moving on. Cool, mascara done. <laughs> okay, let's talk about book number two. You've reached Sam by Dustin Thau. Now, You've Reached Sam is, I mean, the, the it's kind of like, I know it's, there's a similar story, but I can't remember what it was called. But basically, it's all about how um, there's a guy called Sam, and then he's passed away, just like, um, 
this is by the way all these reviews are like spoiler based so if you don't want spoilers i don't know what you want me to do so this guy sam has just passed away i'm gonna try and keep the spoilers to a minimum though he's just passed away a week ago at the point that the book starts and the book starts from the perspective of his girlfriend who's basically coping and dealing with the loss of this guy who she was in love with you know they're in their senior year of high school and they are you know they were planning on heading off to college together getting an apartment together blah 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 and she blames herself for his death and essentially one morning she picks up her phone and she calls his number and he picks up and they've been communicating so the whole thing is oh you know she's trying to move on but she's not moving on and this guy on the other the guy keeps picking up and there's a line where he's like so, uh, there's a line where she says why did you pick up and he says oh because it's you i'll always pick up again adorable love story honestly so cute but also like bit odd <laughs> bit weird i did like the writing a lot more in this one though compared to the first one i think it was nicer cuter it flowed better you know there were warnings when they jump back in time <laughs> um and all that good stuff but yeah i mean it, it it was good it was nice it was a good book i didn't automatically connect with the sam character so actually his death and eventually her moving on was not as heartbreaking to me as it maybe would have been if i had spent more time connecting with him as a character um but i understand obviously we the whole point of the book is actually her learning to live without him and his family learning to live without him and basically that you know when you're in high school you have that intense love but when you grow up you realize oh i just thought it was all consuming but it wasn't really but the reason we can actually move on from that love is because we decide to break up with our high school sweethearts whereas this woman her high school sweetheart died, so she didn't have that closure. And so the book is really all about closure, and it's really good. Like, I, I'd recommend you read it. It's about, I can't, about three and a half stars out of five. The writing is good, or relatively good. I think I looked, and it was his debut novel as well. But yeah, for a debut novel, he's done really well. And I think he's releasing a new novel. He's releasing another book soon, maybe this year not sure though honestly yeah that's pretty much it um that is book number two book i just had a lot to say about book number one because of how bad it was <laughs> and i don't recommend anybody go and read that book i don't think it's worth it but the rest of the books that i'm going to be talking about obviously i i say you read them which i skipped prompt number two which was before we say goodbye again i linked the videos and stuff and I definitely recommend everybody read that series. I said that in that book, that video as well. Go read that series. It's really good. It'll make you cry. It's amazing. Okay? Cool. So that's the Dustin Thaw book. You read Sam. Once again, you know, the characters are Asian though. And there is this um, extra layer of family dynamics that we have to um, look at as well. But again, the book is all about her getting over his death. And basically like she's talking to him on the fucking phone. And there's this, um, I guess there's a metaphor involved where her phone, because it's connected to him in the afterlife, is not receiving any texts and calls from people in real life. And so it's kind of this metaphor of like, sometimes people, forget to live their actual life you know so she's actually forgotten about her own life as she's grieving this guy and i mean it's understandable but it goes on for a long time and she's losing her actual friends in real life and so on and so forth and um yeah i think yeah it's cute and you know it, it did make me cry at the end but mainly because i I, I connected to her as a character more than him, to be honest. So for me, it's always been if the character that I'm reading about is having a hard time, 
Like for example, in Divergent, at the end in at the end of Allegiant book, when Triss dies, during her death scene, I feel nothing. I did I don't I didn't cry, I didn't feel anything. Um because, I mean even the way it was written was a bit like I don't know what's going on, but I didn't feel anything as she died because she didn't feel anything as she died. But after Tobias finds out about her death, he basically completely breaks down. And that is the feeling that I felt. And that is the part where I started crying because then he was breaking down and he was crying, if that makes sense. So I cried for her, not for him. Moving on. Next book I read was I Want to Die, But I Want to Eat Tteokbokki, which is a very relatable feeling, honestly. It has actually taken the internet by storm. The book is basically this, it's written by Korean woman, Baek Sehi, Sahi, Sehi, Baek Sehi. And it's essentially her conversations with her therapist. And the whole thing is like, she's not, she's never been depressed. She said she has some childhood trauma, but it's like one of those like regular childhood trauma situations. And she actually goes to the, um, psychiatrist because she was like i have these intense feelings of basically nothingness like i feel nothing i go through life mechanically i'm not you know i'm not invested in anything i i like my job or i used to like my job and i do a good job i'm good at my job but i feel apathetic to everything and i mean that's a good reason as any to go to a psychiatrist, honestly. You don't need to be having mental breakdowns every single day to consult a psychiatrist or a psychologist. By the way, in case nobody knows, the difference between, and I have to explain this to one of my friends as well, the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist, psychiatrist is an actual medical doctor. They have a medical degree and they can prescribe you pills. Whereas a psychologist is a therapist, the one you just go and you talk to and they can't prescribe you pills. If they think you need pills, they'll they'll give you a reference to a psychiatrist who will then prescribe you the pills. She goes to a psychiatrist because she, it, you know, she actually goes on pills, but also she gets therapy from said psychiatrist. And um, the whole book is, it's a memoir, by the way, is basically her candidly talking about her life experience and, you know, things she's gone through and basically what, led us to this point and having and confronting her sort of inner demons i guess the whole book is and is written like a transcript um there's like it's it genuinely reads like a transcript i said this psychiatrist said this then i said this and psychiatrist said, that said this this is the theme of the book interspersed between the chapters is basically this column that she's writing or something like that if i'm not wrong um about said conversations with her psychiatrist but then it's it, that one kind of reads like a newspaper article but yeah it was my first memoir it was quite good as the first read i don't know if i'd go back to the sequel just because i'm not really a memoir person um i was trying something new uh which is fine and it's good and maybe i'll read more memoirs in the future if they have fun titles like this one but I'm really a, a fiction girly. I don't make a habit of reading nonfiction books. Um, a lot of the times I actually judge my dad for only reading nonfiction books because I'm like, you know, life is bad enough. What are you reading a nonfiction book for? Read, read a fiction book, you know, have fun with what you're reading. It's entertainment at the end of the day. That was book number three for the prompt, for prompt number four, an author's debut novel. Because this is Big Sahih's debut novel. And last but not least is the do's and donuts of love, which was so cute. Oh my God. Okay. So if you guys have read Honey and Issues Guide to Fake Dating, it's adorable. It's a sapphic romance. It's so, so cute. It's um, Asian. It's two Asian girls. Like it's two South Asian girls, two Indian girls. I think Issues Indian and Honey is not. I can't remember, I read that book a while back. But it's so adorable. It's like a high school sapphic romance. It is, you know, parents being homophobic, 
like you'd expect from a South Asian family and all of that. And I, again, I have, so this is not the first book I've read from her. The book, the prompt was represents what you want in your next life. Like I said before, it's basically just that I want a separate romance in my next or even my current life. Yeah, this was really cute. It was basically, there's two families that run rival donut shops exactly across from one another. This is based in Ireland. And the two daughters get on the junior baking show in Ireland. It's told from the perspective of one um, of the girls. And she, essentially, she loves to cook and she loves to bake. And she's so invested in this, etc. They're broken up at the beginning of the book. And the reason they broke up is the show because the other girl, um, she her parents wanted to go on there and she applied for it without even telling this girl. And she was basically like, if you were there, there's no way I can win. And so I didn't want you to be there. And so this girl obviously gets really offended and she's like, what? I don't know that that to you. And that's like a breach of trust. And essentially that girl then turns around and says, could you not go on it? And so she says, you know what this would mean to my family. So I'm gonna go on it. So that's how they break up. By the way, this part's in like the middle of the book, but essentially they're broken up. And she alludes to this like betrayal and stuff throughout the book and whatever. They end up on, both of them end up on the baking show um, and they compete against one another. And there's sabotage and, you know, alternate romances and all of these things. And at the end, the, the, the girl who loves sort of baking and cooking, she gets an opportunity to work with her favorite chef. Ooh, ooh, lady, hello. She gets an opportunity to work with her favorite chef, which is great. And yeah, hang on. Let me complete the look. And let, let's have a wrap up conversation. My thoughts on the challenge. I like the reading challenge. It was started in 2020 or 2021 when Asian hate was rampant in the US and across the world, basically East Asian hate to be specific. And I think it's a good challenge for a month. I think I would like to do more reading challenges in the future because it does make me read more, which like, since I finished The Do's and Donuts of Love, I haven't actually read another book, which is quite bad. Um, I should, again, my next book's gonna be The Scatter of Light by Melinda Lowe. But yeah, I actually really enjoyed reading for this challenge and I really liked the books as well, except for the first book. Once again, check out the challenge down below. It doesn't have to be done in May, just because it's AAPI month in the US. That doesn't mean you can't do the challenge at any time of the year. Basically like support people of color in the publishing industry because it is an issue with people of color being published or working in that industry. Um, as it is in most industries actually. The week after, I think it's gonna be my Grace vlog. I did film it, but I haven't edited it yet. And let me know if you guys like me doing vlog, because I did feel like the cleanup vlog as my last video, like a month ago, that did really well. Which like, I don't like watching vlogs. So I don't know if my audience likes watching vlogs, if that makes sense. So, it's a really awkward filming a vlog in outside of my house in real life. I am also going back, going back home on the fifteenth of July. At which point I'll have finished all my internships and my placement year, and I will do a video talking about my experience doing that as well. Um, another video I want to do is like a personal project, like a craft project that I'm doing. And yeah, I think this is gonna be a really long video. So if you stuck around, leave me something in the chat to know that you stuck around. Not the chat, the comments. <laughs> leave me something, um, leave me a lipstick emoji. Let's make it specific. Oh, ooh, no, you know what? Leave me a boba, boba emoji in the chat if you stuck around to the end. And if you did, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys had a good time watching me. I hope you guys have an amazing day. And bye!